we want to look at some of the interoperability scenarios between IRIS and DHIS2 that are actively being deployed. Um, we begin with the common scenario uh, against which most of the other scenarios build off of, um, and that is looking first at DHIS2 as a facility registry. Here um, we're extracting the metadata about facilities that's in DHIS2 including the facility type, the name, its geolocation, both with Latin long uh, and its position in the geographic hierarchy of the country. Next, we have IRIS, which has health worker data. Um, this includes the cadre, the deployment or posting information for the health worker, contact information, such as their phone numbers or email, um, supervisory information, training information, competencies, um, CPD, CEUs, um, and what we see typically in a country is that there is more than one HRIS system. Um, this can be by the sector, whether it's um, the public sector Ministry of Health um, system or um, a large FBO um, that's delivering uh, uh, services. Uh, we also see a, uh, multiple systems based on uh, the business use. We have HR traditional HR management systems. Um, as well as licensure and accreditation systems that would be used by uh, a nursing council or, or prof other professional council of health workers. What we would like to do is to bring all of this information together into one source, um, and that's through an interlinked registry um, that pulls the facility information, the geographic hierarchy from DHIS2, as well as the health worker information from uh, IRIS or other similar HRIS systems um, and interlinks cross-references the two to prevent, present a common um, data model um, for both health worker and health facility information um, so, as well as the deployment and the services um, for those health workers. This is part of the larger open HIE architecture um, and which is bringing the various components of the health information system together. Um, what we are adding onto this here is the interoperability layer, uh, which plays the role of um, making the data available to external point of care systems. Um, it handles routing of um, data through um, the interoperability layer into the back end systems. It provides security both in terms of um, encryption and auditing, um, as well as controls the synchronization of data, the timing of um, uh, data synchronization between the, the various components of the health information system. Um, the standards that are in effect here are the care services discovery standard, which is modeling the um, health facility and health services and health worker data um, and then two standards related to terminologies um, SVS which is sharing value sets it's a bit of an older standard we're moving towards the fire value set which is a more modern restful API for accessing terminologies building off this common scenario we have a lot of other use cases that we can um, employ or one is mHero, which is a two-way health worker communication platform, um, which uh, uses the information in the interlinked registry um, to communicate with health workers for routine and aperiodic data collection, knowledge assessment and reinforcement, alerting. Uh, it's really can be used for a variety of use cases. Um, uh, it's more of the, the platform rather than the specific use case. Um, what we do is we have um, our mHero system, which it pulls data from the uh, open InfoMan, the interlinked registry, um, and enables a communication to the health worker. Um, that can be done through multiple channels. Um, for example, Rapid Pro, which is a SMS platform um, for designing workflows. It will allow people that are non-developers to design different communications back and forth, primarily for SMS to the health worker. Uh, we also have in the works um, ComCare, which is uh, Android-based communication platform um, using the MoTeC as its interoperability layer. Both of these can be used to 
start and workflows for the data collection on with the health workers. This data is then synchronized back into IRIS, so you can look at um, the data that was collected and it, as well as the information that's already in IRIS to do cross-referencing and um, cross-tabular reports. We are also working on the reporting from mHero into DHIS2, um, the data collected. This would be more for the routine data um, and less for the, the non-routine data collection. Um, building a bit off of this use case, oh, sorry, so this is again the same standards that we had before, um, CSD and the two terminology services uh, based standards. Um, building off this a little bit, go, going in a slightly different direction, um, we have the mobile alert communication management. This is alerting to both clients of the health system facilities and health workers according to the use cases of public health alerting and care reminders. Um, here we have a piece of software called MNUT, um, which is named after Emma Nutt, the first female switchboard operator. Uh, we have a one-way communication um, to the health worker um, with an optional acknowledgement back. Um, so this seems uh, at the moment it is a bit of a subset of the use cases in the mHero platform. Um, however, the what we're doing is we're also linking into a client registry. Um, and so not only we're querying the interlinked registry for health worker and health facility data, we query the client registry for data on the um, clients of the health system, and we can deliver messages to them as well. Um, we also um, allow, assuming that the interoperability layer permits it, uh, different point of service applications to trigger um, alerts. So the, the point of service application, whether this be something like OpenMRS or um, some other um, mHealth or eHealth application, can just send a reference, a message to a health worker or a client with just the, the reference. MNUT would be in charge of determining the correct channel, um, whether that's SMS, email, or system to system to communicate that message out to the, the client or the health worker. Um, so it becomes a lot simpler for the message delivery. Um, we're also linking um, uh, DHIS2, um, in particular the DHIS2 tracker into the client registry. Um, so we will have um, all of that um, client information in one central system and it reduces sort of the implementation burden um, in, in the management of the uh, for the various health information systems. Here we have again the CSD standard um, for the health worker health facility information, the two terminology services, but we're adding MACM um, mobile alert communication management which is a profile from IHE it's based on HL7 fire um, and that is handling that's the standard that's implemented by MNUT. Um, we also have PIXM and PDQM um, for um, creating and querying the client registry. Um, next, we have the aggregate data exchange standard. So this is for generators of aggregate um, data about the health system from point of care applications um, can submit a message to um, DHIS2, you know, the number of doctors, um, in a specific facility um, during a particular month or the number of cases of cholera in a district um, for that month. Um, so we're using the ADX standard um, for this data exchange and what happens is um, a, a point of care system will generate the ADX message. It goes into the interoperability layer which is then responsible for validating that message, translating any local identifiers that are used by for a facility by the point of care applications to the, the canonical or enterprise identifier for the facility and then passes that on to DHIS2 um, for reporting. Uh, he, the standards here are again CSD, now ADX um, for the aggregate data exchange 
and the fire value set for terminologies will be um, used as well. So the last one is sort of a future direction um, of integrating the training information systems. What we see is that there's a, a lot of um, problems is that multiple implementing partners and multiple training delivery organizations come in to a country, deliver training, and then the ministry has no um, way to um, aggregate all that information together and attach it to their health worker record. Um, so what we're trying to do is to identify the standards um, to report on the, the trainings that given to health workers as well as the competencies received. Um, that way it we're looking at working with a lot of the um, training delivery organizations to, to come to consensus as well as to uh, on these standards and then uh, we ideally will be implementing that in software so that we can have automatic reporting um, of the the competencies gained into the the health worker registry or interlinked registry to be accessible um, to IRIS as, as well as to other parts of the information system. Um, in this context, we can think of the um, the FELT program um, and the the trainings there to know that who has been trained. Um, also, thinking of the um, ETUs that were set up in uh, um, Liberia and and nobody knowing exactly who's trained in operating those ETUs anymore. Um, if we had a system in place to to track that information and help the ministries to manage that type of information, um, we would be in a much better place than we are right now. Thank you.